Hey there, Internet. After a few people saw my video on my audio generator here, they had a few questions, mainly being, how do you hook this up to an amplifier and use it? Now, if you haven't seen that video, I'll throw a link down in the description where you can watch where you can watch it and see, and maybe you might even have the same question. But today in this video, we're going to be talking about how you can hook the f audio generator here up to an amplifier. Now, I'm going to be using this kind of cheapo beat-up record player for my amplifier. Actually, mainly I'm going to be using just the amplifier part. Now, do note that if you do work with a record player for your experiments or whatever, this particular record player was designed for ceramic cartridge, so it doesn't need a preamp, like the one I have here. This was designed for a magnetic cartridge, so magnetic cartridges need a preamp. This one does not. This is just a straight amplifier. But, getting to the point, it's actually quite simple to hook it up. Now, you're, in this particular case, this is a mono record player, so it only has one channel. And this is mono, which means it only has one channel. We'll get to stereo in just a minute. But it's actually quite simple. There's a negative wire, and I hook this to the negative wire. And then I take my positive and hook it to the positive <laughs> wire here. And there you go. I can use the volume control. And when I change this to a higher frequency, so then basically it works. But you're probably wondering, how do I figure this out? And how do I figure this out on my particular amp? Because some of you might not have a beetle beat up old cheapo record player that you can mess around with. Maybe you just have an amplifier. Well, there's a couple things we need to understand. First, we need to understand that whether it's an amplifier like the one that's in this cheapo record player, or it's an amplifier like this pile here. Again, this isn't a product placement. I just happen to have their audio... I just happen to have their audio amplifiers, and I kind of like this one too. But what you got to understand is whether any any type of amplifier, it'll have an input and it will have an output. And again, the, the output on this one happens to go, you know, be these terminal clips where I can attach a speaker. The second thing you got to understand is whether it's a record like this 45 of Billy Joel or a CD like this CD of the Strawberry Alarm Clocks. Or for that matter, anything that has music or some kind of audio to it will at some point have to generate an electrical signal. For example, I have my record player here hooked up to my oscilloscope. So when I put the needle down on the record, you can see it generates an electrical signal. And if you listen very carefully, you'll probably be able to hear the music in, coming from the record, actually coming from the record needle in the background. Now, I'm going to keep the audio off, because again, I don't want YouTube to come back with copyright strikes and all that, you know, all that stuff. But, getting back to it, if I lift up the needle, you'll see that the lines go flat. If I put down the needle, it's generating two different signals. Now again, the top signal that I'm moving up and down is for the left channel, and the bottom one is for the right channel. And then together, that generates your left and your right and your full stereo image. And as we said earlier, mono only has one input, so it'll only generate one signal, and stereo technically has two inputs and will generate two signals, like what you're seeing here. And again, you'll notice, if you look really closely at some of them, sometimes the top and the bottom will look just a little bit different. 
And once again, if I pick up the needle, you'll see the lines go flat. And if I drop the needle back on the record, it'll start making electrical signals. And again, if we had this hooked up to an amplifier and some speakers, we would actually be able to hear those electrical signals. But again, I have it off because I don't want YouTube to come back with copyright infringement and all that other copyright stuff. Now again, I have my CD player this time hooked up to my oscilloscope, and if I back up a little bit and I hit play, you'll see that it generates electrical signals. Again, this one's in stereo, so it generates one for the left channel and one for the right. Again, if I hit play on the thing, you'll see that it makes, the again, the two electrical signals. If I hit pause, it goes flat. So, now that we have our audio generator hooked back up to our oscilloscope, you can see it's only producing one line or one signal. Because, again, it's a mono output. The other thing is, if you notice, compared to our other audio sources, like our record player and CD, the line's pretty stable and doesn't move a lot, which makes it really good for measurements. Now, in comparison, if we switch back and we hit play on our CD player, you can see that the line moves and changes a lot. So, even though they're both electrical signals, this is pr primarily why you find CDs to be paired with audio equipment and great for enjoyment, and audio generators are more paired with electrical and testing equipment. Because again, a solid line, you know, or I shouldn't say solid line, a consistent signal like we have here, the bottom line, for the audio generator is great for testing, but not so much for listening, and vice versa. Our top one, which is coming from one of the channels from the CD player, is great for listening, but that keeps moving. To try and make a constant measurement, especially with no numbers on it, is really challenging. Though, they both are electrical signals and both can be amplified. So, now knowing these two things, we can put them together and we can kind of understand how this is done. So like we talked about earlier, the inputs for our record player here, and I, again, I pulled it out of its container so we can get to the underneath because we'll be looking at the output too. Right. Has, our amplifier here has an input, which are these two wires here. Again, it's a mono record player. So we can... Connect the one wire here, so negative goes to negative, and positive will go to the positive. Now the output currently is hooked up to the speaker, which is, again, under these cardboard holes. And if we, again, I'll turn this off because I don't feel like getting shocked, but if we looked underneath, you can see there's the actual electric circuitry for the amplifier, and then these two are the wires that run to the speaker. So these two wires are our outputs. And what we can do is pull these off. And grab our wires over here that are apparently still heavily connected. Two are that run to our oscilloscope, and we can hook those up to the output. Now again, the other thing is we're going to move these off to the side so they don't make electrical contact with anything. Another important thing, if you do open stuff up and pull parts and use it for other purposes, Make sure that nothing is in contact so you can't get any electrical shorts on these boards because bad things will happen if you do. So again, as a safety precaution, I have moved my wires away from the actual physical board. Now I will flip this back up and what we can do is we'll turn on our scope, set it to the right input, give that a second to warm up.
right. There we go. We'll make, and when we turn the vault, so when we turn it on, hear the click, and then again, again, you can see the amplifiers distorting it a bit, but I can make the signal louder and softer. Just like I can with just by turning this dial here. Now, the other thing you're probably wondering is, okay, great. How do I do this with like the other amplifiers? Maybe the, even the one you were talking about earlier, like this pile here. Well, guess what we're about to get to in just a minute. So right now, here we go. We have our pile. And if we look on the back, you can see there's our input. And we have the right channel of our output, because again, this is stereo, so there's an input for our right, there's an input for our left, I don't know why they flipped the colors on that, they just did, and then there's an output for our right and an output for our left. And what we have now is the output from our right is running to the back of our speaker. But you'll notice... Our input is not a wire. It's an RCA jack. And you're probably going to go, well, how are we going to convert that? Well, there's actually a couple different options. You can either get one of these. The one end is an three and a half millimeter, you know, headphone jack. And the other end is RCA plugs. So you can plug one side in, you know, where you need to plug it into, and the other, you can take an alligator clip and, you know, clip the top for your left, clip the middle for your right, and clip the bottom for your ground, or you can buy one of these RC mounting boards, and you can see I can get to the wires underneath. So, I'll take the red lead from this RCA cord that I have here, I will plug it in to my right here, to my right here. So this is now connected with my input. And then what I can do is I can take the wires from my audio generator, clip the ground to the ground, and clip the positive to this wire here. Now that we have that better clipped, the other thing to note is the positive is the inner term, the inner terminal, and the negative is this outer terminal here. And if you actually look on the RCA cord, the thing that juts out that is the positive, and the inner ring is the negative. So, now that we have this hooked in, we have our audio generator on, now we can power it. Now, before we power it, there's one more thing. Take your volume and turn it all the way down. The other thing to note is, be careful if you're using, you know, new or expensive equipment, and you're not super familiar with this, again, be careful, maybe not maybe you shouldn't go out and buy something really expensive to start with because if you break it you just broke something really expensive but what I'll do is I'll turn it on I have my battery pack here turn on the battery pack I'll turn that on and if I turn the volume up you can see there's the sound Now, again, the other reason I said to turn this down is because it'll be, v sometimes be very, very loud. I barely turn this, and I'm already getting a decent amount of sound. Again, I don't know how much my phone is picking up, but that's not even, that's barely a quarter. That's might be more of an eighth of a turn. Maybe even less. And it's already really, really loud. So again, that's why 
to start down at a very low volume. Now again to note, because my system here is mono, I'm only using the one channel because I only need one. So I can kind of use this as a mono because it only has, you know, one channel and I don't need both. The other thing that I could do is I can disconnect these wires and then hook them into my oscilloscope because they're the output and do the same thing I did with my little record player speaker. And YouTube, that basically concludes how to hook up an audio generator to an amplifier. Thanks for watching. If you like this, subscribe and check out my other...